Welcome, everyone. I recently sat down with uh, Brother Jacob Prash about a recent interview that was done by Savannah Guthrie from the Today Show uh, regarding Hillsong. She sat down with uh, Brian Houston, the founder and the head of that organization, and uh, recently had a conversation with Jacob about it. And uh, we found out that in the interview itself, there's some things that I think people need to know. And there are things that people need to be aware uh, of the whole entire industry of Hillsong. And uh, I have my brother here, Jacob Prash. Jacob, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Jacob, you and I have talked about this video. Uh, it's about yeah. nine minutes long. And uh, I think we're going to do something a little bit different that we normally do. We're going to play the video. We're going to hear Brian Houston's response to Savannah Guthrie. Uh, I think some of her questions are valid and very good. Uh, obviously some softball ones, but we'll leave that up to the, uh, to the hearer. And then I'm going to ask you to comment on the answers and the response that Brian Houston gives. So there's a few sections here. So we go one by one and uh, I'm going to share my screen here a little bit and let everybody in on what we're watching. What's this season in the church been like for you? I think it's been difficult, clearly, because a lot of disappointment in some of the things that have emerged. Get your mind right. There's hope for you yet. Jacob, this is a question that Savannah Guthrie asked regarding Hillsong and a tough season, she says. And, um, and she says, you know, has this been a difficult season for you? Of course, she's referring to Carl Lentz and the uh, scandals and what happened with Carl Lentz. Uh, do you believe that this is what uh, Mr. Houston is trying to say, that this has been a tough season for him because it's new, the scandals are new and everything? First of all, this is an exercise in damage control by Brian Houston, and it's not the first one. Carl Lentz was not the first sex scandal, and he will not be the last. Sex scandals were inherent, endemic within Hillsong almost from the beginning. Additionally, financial scandals were broadcast on ABC TV, that is the Australian broadcasting, uh, in an expose of former Hillsong employees and some other ironically Pentecostal preachers who were protesting what was becoming of it. They said it was an enterprise, it was not a church, it was entertainment, it was not worship, and so forth. This was their view. These scandals are not new. This is just another exercise in attempted damage control by Brian Houston of something that had previous scandals and will have further scandals in the future. The record speaks for itself. Very good. Let's continue to watch because uh, I think they're going to talk about Carl Lentz in a minute. And, uh, and then there's a good question that is asked. Uh, regarding this scandal to Mr. Houston. Lentz founded the East Coast branch of Hillsong in 2010, drawing stars in like Justin Bieber, who Lentz baptized in an NBA player's bathtub. But it all came crashing down last fall when Lentz was fired and admitted to an affair, writing on social media, I am deeply sorry for breaking the trust of many people. A woman who says she was his mistress speaking soon after. He keeps saying, um, I manage celebrities and I travel with them. He didn't want to say what he does. And more allegations of unusual behavior for a pastor followed. People described Carl Lentz as somewhat aloof and removed from the actual ministry. They say he would come in a chauffeured car, wait in a green room, come do a sermon and depart. Does that bother you? It does to a degree, for sure. Look, Carl is Carl. He's a unique character. There's a lot of things I miss about Carl. But having said that, there were leadership issues that I believe included lying, included what I would call narcissistic behavior. Well, does it bother you? Jacob, lying, lying yes. Does lying and narcissistic behavior. Let's take the lying and narcissistic behavior. What is to be expected from Carl Lentz? Right from the onset, he came from Hillsong. He had this affair with this Muslim woman. She's not a Christian, not from the church. And other women have come forward since that time, bringing allegations of misconduct concerning Mr. Lentz. But let's begin with the first sex scandal, at least the one we knew about. The Royal Commission, a British government, or I'm sorry, a British government established agency adopted by the British Commonwealth, of which Australia is a member, 
conducted an official inquiry into the sex scandals at Hillsong prior to Carl Lentz. This was purely in Australia. The patriarch of Hillsong, uh, Frank Houston, Brian's father, who was originally from New Zealand, was found to be a homosexual pedophile, and the Royal Commission determined that Brian Houston, this man being interviewed, is guilty of cover-up. Now, this is the kind of thing normally associated in the sex scandals and the orchestrated conspiracies to cover up pedophilia in the Roman Catholic Church. Well, the Royal Commission said that Brian Houston, that was the determination, was guilty of protecting his father, Frank. Now, I knew Pentecostal preachers in Australia and New Zealand, including members of the executive at one time, the former general secretary of the Assemblies of God in Australia, as well as other people in New Zealand who always knew, always knew what Frank Houston was. They always knew it, but they couldn't prove it. Mm. It came as no surprise to anyone, but I knew people in New Zealand and Australia said he was exactly that. Before the Royal Commission determined that this man being interviewed, Brian Houston, protected that pedophile at the expense of not protecting children whose lives were being maligned in a sexually perverted manner involving criminal sexual activity, sex crimes. This is Brian Houston. Who is he to be a voice for any kind of suggestion of morality in the area of sexual integrity, given what he himself was found culpable of doing concerning his own father, the patriarch of Hillsong. This is the reality. What we're hearing is pure hypocrisy. The first question this journalist should have asked was not about Carl Lenz, but about Frank Houston and the Royal Commission finding him guilty of cover-up. That's the beginning. Very good, Jacob. Let's continue on. Let's see what Savannah asks Mr. Houston again. Should you have known earlier? Should you have done something earlier? about the leadership of Hillsong? I think there's a lot of things I should have known earlier. And hopefully moving forward, we'll make sure we have far better systems in place and better accountability. You see, Better accountability. Should you have known earlier? There was no accountability when his deputy, second in command of Hillsong in Sydney, Pat Masidi, was found in sexual immorality. This was not the first time. <clears throat> and there was no improvement after the instance with Mr. Masidi that happened in his own church right under his own nose, not thousands of miles away in New York. It's what happened in Sydney in his own church. Uh, concerning the idea that he should have known about other things and the reference by the journalist to rides on limousines, I was once interviewed by Dr. Gordon Moyes on radio in Sydney, and the subject came up for discussion about Brian Houston's own book. This is Brian Houston, this man's own book. You need more money. That's what he said. You need more money. That was the book. I'm quoting from the book. He said, the next time you want a cup of coffee, instead of making a cup of coffee at home, put on your best clothes. Go down to an expensive hotel and order coffee in an expensive hotel, lobby, or lounge, wearing your best clothes. You will pay a lot more money for the coffee, but it will expand your thinking about money. What does this have to do with Christian discipleship? What does this have to do with teaching young people to be Christ-like? It has nothing to do with biblical Christianity. What it has to do with is breeding reprobates like Carl Lentz. Take a good look at Mr. Lentz. You created him, Brian Houston. He must have read your book writing in those limousines. Yeah, it, um, it's, it's quite a thing, Jacob, with um, the scandals, not just in New York, but the focus was New York. There was other ones, as well as Dallas and other uh, branches of it. Those uh, songs have to close down in Texas. I pray to God it closes down in Sydney. That's right. That's right. Uh, Jacob, let's continue because I think this is a, a good question that's coming up right here. 
uh, to Mr. Houston. This pastor with the VIP row palling around celebrities, how come he didn't come down harder and say, not in my church, no way. How does this reflect the message I'm trying to preach? There's another side to it. I mean, one person who's obviously been well reported is Justin Bieber. If you think back several years now, when he was wrecking hotel rooms and basically on the edge of getting deported to Canada, there was certainly talk about that, and living an out-of-control life uh, with abuse of, of uh, drugs and so on. And look at Justin Bieber today. Anyone who's been fair could see a radical change. And so not everything about it is bad. No. Not everything about it is bad. There's some good fruit that came out of that. Some celebrities change their lives. First of all, we live in the culture of celebrity. God is not impressed by it. So often when celebrities become Christians or ostensibly become Christians, they're put on display as showpieces. I don't object to them giving their testimonies, but it goes beyond that. They, they become advertising gimmicks for the promotion of the megachurch. That's what they become. And sometimes these people are even given microphones to begin bringing what should be sermonic material based on their experiences, but they're new Christians, if they are Christians at all. I'm reminded what Jesus said to the Pharisees in Matthew 23, you go to the ends of the earth to make one proselyte, one convert, and he becomes twice as much a son of hell as he used to be. You can say there was some improvement in the life of Justin Bieber after he came to Hillsong, but how do you account for the decline in the life, spiritually and morally, of the leader of Hillsong, Carl Lentz? That's the issue. How do you account for what happened to him? How do you account for what happened to Pat Nassidi? How do you account for what happened to Frank Houston, the patriarch? How do you account for them? They didn't get better at Hillsong. They got worse. Very true. Jacob, it seems like the church has always been wanting to get celebrities uh, into the church. You, you know quite a bit about it from Bob Dylan to other people that have been uh, thrusted into the spotlight uh, by the church. It just seems to be another occasion uh, and now it's happening in Hillsong with Carl Lentz seems to be the one attracting all these uh, all these uh, supposedly uh, stars coming into the church to bring credibility, Jacob. Is that what they're trying to do? Well, he appeared on Oprah Winfrey and the compromised answers he gave in no way reflect the character or person or teachings of Christ. Carl Lentz said on television that we have a position on love, but a discussion about everything else. When asked if homosexuality or same-sex marriage was wrong, he prevaricated. He wouldn't deal with the issue. He circumvented it. He said, we just believe in love. You'll hear Brian Houston saying the same thing. Now, again, I've had many friends who are homosexuals. I had friends who were transvestites. That's the world I came from. I came from a world of the New York underground with cocaine and drugs, and I knew a lot of people who were that. I was not that, but I certainly had friends who were that. And, and I know people who were saved out of it. I know people who were saved out of the homosexual lifestyle, praise God, and out of the lesbian lifestyle. But they will tell you emphatically, it was wrong. It was morally wrong. It was unnatural. It was perverted. I'm a new creation in Christ. That's what the people say that of it will tell you. They will not prevaricate or circumlocute the way Carl Lentz did and the way Brian Houston does. Yeah, I think there is a question coming up uh, a little bit later on the interview regarding that very issue, Jacob. So uh, let's continue on because the issue of celebrity continues uh, uh, by Savannah Guthrie asking him more questions. I guess the question is whether the celebrities got better treatment, more attention. Yeah, I do think that we did allow a culture to develop where it was one rule for celebrities and a different rule for other people. Well, maybe favoritism in the church, Jacob? What does the epistle of James say about that very thing? The epistle of James vociferously condemns what he admits happened in Hillsong. 
once I was speaking at a church in Sydney, and I had a couple of Christian musicians attend the meeting I was speaking at. They heard of me through recorded materials, and they came to hear me speak. They had just quit Hillsong. They worked with Darlene Trek, and they told me the whole enterprise is about entertainment, money, and celebrity. It's not about Jesus. It's not about the gospel. It's not about doctrine. It's a culture based on entertainment, celebrity, and money. Mm -hmm. It's Hollywood comes to church. It's Hollywood with a phony cross on the roof. It's wannabe. That's what it is. These were people who were Hillsong musicians. They saw what it was, and they left. They were sincere Christians. I recall when the pedophile protecting Pope John Paul II came to Sydney. At the same time, there was the expose given to the American lawyer, David Shea, that came from Australia of the uh, solicitaciones uh, criminales, documentation from the Vatican. With the Vatican actually issuing a statement by the man who was then called Moratzinger, later Pope Benedict XVI, under John Paul II, instructing bishops to protect pedophiles. And this came to light in Australia. Darlene Czech says, this is our time to serve the Roman Catholic Church when the Pope came to Sydney. Again, speak to people saved out of Roman Catholicism. Speak to children who were sexually abused in the Roman Catholic Church and their abusers were protected by the bishops and the papacy. Or better yet, speak to the children sexually abused by Frank Houston. Mm. Mm. Jacob, she continues because uh, uh, she holds her maybe a little feet to the fire here. Um, you know, some people say it's softball questions, but uh, here's a question by Savannah regarding that very thing that you just mentioned to Carl Lentz and his treatment. I'll give you the cynical view that as long as Carl was attracting press, bringing more members into Hillsong, that you were okay with that. You, you knew what was going on, but you were okay with that. What do you say to those who believe that? I find it annoying that people thought that it was important to me and my wife Bobby uh, to attract famous people to church. She he finds it offensive, what she just asked, uh, that, um, you know, he was okay with it. As long as people were coming in and the celebrities were rolling in, uh, he was okay with it. He says he finds it offensive. He never wanted that. I would point people to his previous answer, where he admitted there was two standards. Of course he wanted it. He just contradicted himself. Now he mentions his wife, Bobby. Well, since he brought her up, let me respond. Her series on Christian women love sex, that was her series, was depraved. There were teenage girls from Hillsong, 13, 14, early adolescents, listening to, following this teaching of Bobby Houston. When we read about marital romance in scripture, for instance, the Song of Solomon, which obviously has a typological implication for Christ in the church and the opinion of many theologians and so forth, but it's Solomon's romance with Shulamit. Anila dodi dodi li, I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. Now, by means of poetic metaphor and describing fruit and, and things like this and come into my garden, my beloved and all this, it's obviously metaphorically speaking of marital consummation and sexual acts in terms of marital romance. It does that. But the focus of the Song of Solomon is on the relationship. Shulamit loves Solomon, Shlomo HaMelech. She loves her husband. Her husband loves her, which we're told in Ephesians is a reflection of Christ's relationship with the church and in Hosea and Ezekiel, God's relationship with Israel. Sex is the means, the device to love someone and to procreate so there can be more love in God's design. Christian women love their husbands. Christian women love babies and children. And above all, Christian women love God. 
It's the world that takes the focus. It's Hollywood that takes the focus off the person and puts it on the act. It's the advertising industry. It's Madison Avenue in New York and Covent Gardens in London that takes the focus off the relationship and puts it on the act. Christian women love sex. No, Christian women love their husbands. They love babies. They love children and family. They love God. The act is the means. The act is not the object, except if you go to Hillsong and listen to the false teaching of Bobby Houston being pumped into teenage girls that has absolutely no, no concept of what the scripture teaches about marital romance. Very good, Jacob. Uh, I guess the question, the natural question would be, well, if Carl was, Lentz was this bad and you knew about it, maybe you're okay because uh, he's just like you. And I think that's the question that she's going to ask right now is, uh, is he a mini, a mini Brian Houston? Let me ask you to respond to one idea that has been out in the press a lot. One former staffer said Carl was a mini you, a mini Brian Houston. What do you say? I mean, on one level, if people say Carl was like me, I'd see it as a compliment because incredibly gifted guy. But on another level, I don't think Carl really is anything like me. What about the... He's nothing like him. Of course he is. His stage antics are borrowed directly from the style of his mentor, Brian Houston. Just watch him where motivational speaking replaces exposition of scripture, where entertainment replaces worship, where hype artistry replaces anointing, supplants it. This is Brian Houston. This is Carl Linz. That apple did not fall far from the tree. And again, when it came to the material corruption and the amounts of money going into those cash cards to hide the purchases, uh, I point you to Brian Houston's book, You Need More Money. Read it for yourself. It's reprehensible. It's shameful. It's disgraceful. Yes, Carl Lentz and Brian Houston were talking something more like cause and effect. Hmm. Very good, Jacob, because a lot of people would say, you know, um, it's just a bad apple. He's just a bad apple in a, in, a, in, a fruit, in a fruit basket here. Let's not come down too hard on Houston. But what you're saying is that this is exactly the byproduct of Houston. Yeah, and, and, and Frank Houston was another bad apple. And Pat Mercedes was another bad apple. And this guy they caught in Texas now from Hillsong was another bad apple. And Carl Lenz is another bad apple. It's not a bad apple and a barrel. It's a barrel of bad apples. Very good, Jacob. Uh, let's continue on because... Uh, uh, again, the celebrity pastor scenario comes into play here and uh, whether Houston was okay with it. Notion of you as the head of the church and the pastor of the church, but being a rarefied presence and waiting in the green room before the sermon or not really being terribly approachable. Does any of that ring true to you? Uh, well, to a degree, yes, but I'll, I'll give perspective to it. Mostly before you speak, you, you, you're preparing and you've got to keep your heart right. And you don't want distractions. I am ultimately responsible. I am ultimately accountable. Now, Jacob, you've been in green rooms before, uh, but you never had this issue about being approachable. I think a lot of people think of you being uh, very much part and partial with everybody in the group. Uh, but here's a question for Brian Houston that, hey, you got a celebrity pastor. He's not even around. He doesn't get, he doesn't get involved with the congregation. That's right, they remain aloof. They become exactly what the Pharisees were, exactly what the Sanhedrin were, an exclusive religious club of affluent theocrats who see the people as simply the mechanism to keep themselves in power and pocket. That's the way such systems work. When Christ is not the head of the church, a man is going to be. If they were really under the headship of Christ, they wouldn't be teaching those things they teach, and they wouldn't be doing those things they do. What you see in Hillsong is a church whose head is not Christ. If it was, these things wouldn't have happened. 
There may have been given instances, but they would have been dealt with. Instead, you had the protection of pedophiles. You had Carl Lenz allowed to continue month after month after month after month with his shameful antics in the public eye and on television, in the celebrity culture with Oprah. This is what you had. This is what you're always going to have when Christ is not the head. You're going to have the world. Instead of bringing the gospel into the world, ventures like Hillsong bring the world into the gospel. Mm. We are not called to bring the world into the gospel. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the boastful pride of life. We are not told to do those things. We are told to bring the gospel into the world. Hillsong was constituted to do the opposite. Yeah. And seemingly you see the fruit of it, Jacob. What about abuse, Jacob? Let's hear what Savannah has to ask uh, um, Mr. Houston regarding the abuse that went on within the church. Uh, actually, the New York church, but the East Coast uh, churches that were of Hillsong. The firing of Lentz in New York opened the floodgates for Hillsong. In the months that followed, a senior staffer in New Jersey resigned over what a church spokesperson says was an inappropriate message on social media. Hillsong announced its pastors in Dallas resigned. The church there closed. A letter to New York leadership in 2018 surfaced, alleging abusive behavior by church leaders. Other former congregants from Australia to the U.S. told today some volunteers were overworked. In my mind, if one person is treated badly, that's one too many. If it's true that people have been treated badly or that people have been bullied, I am 100% committed to moving that out of our church. Yeah. Now, Jacob, this was rampant. This was not just in one church, but it was rampant. If he was committed to doing it in New York and in the East Coast of the United States, why didn't he do it in Australia? Why did Pat Mercedes, his deputy commander, get as far as he did? Whenever you have a theocratic aristocracy, you are going to have what Jesus despised, the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Whoever they were, we don't know, but we know what the word means. Nicolaity, a suppression of the people. Call it heavy shepherding if you want to, out of Ezekiel chapter 34. It doesn't matter. It's lording it over and exploiting. What you see in Hillsong is what you will find in any church that is not under the scriptural headship of Christ that is not controlled by his spirit, but by the spirit of the world, the zeitgeist. You're going to find exploitation, exploitation, perversion of the scriptures, and you're going to find sexploitation. Those three things will come as a result. Exploitation, a mishandling of the scripture and a negation of rightly dividing the word of God exegetically. No expository preaching, nothing like this. Following the exploitation, you will find exploitation, financial shenanigans. You need more money. Third, you will find sexploitation. You cannot have that power over people that is not a godly power and not attract vulnerable women. Paul speaks of vulnerable women in the church. It's inevitable these things are going to happen. It was predictable what would become of Hillsong. The real blame is with the Assemblies of God and the Assemblies of God ministers in Australia who allowed it to happen. But under the counterfeit revivals and the poor leadership they had previously, of Andrew Evans and people like this, it was nothing there to stop Brian Houston from taking over a fragmented movement that was in decline. And what he did was, instead of reviving it spiritually, reviving it with the preaching of God's word and a, a real evangelism, he revived it with hype, with entertainment, with motivational speaking. Well, you can do that. But unless the Lord builds a house, it cannot stand. Mm -hmm. I have seen this repeatedly. What is left of the Crystal Cathedral of Robert Schuller? near Los Angeles. We know what's left of it, what became of it. What became of the Airport Vineyard Church in Toronto, Canada? 
the great mecca of charismania. And by the way, I'm not a cessationist. What became of the Toronto phenomenon? What happened after the scandals and the split in Pensacola, Florida? What happened to Jim and Tammy Baker and the PTL club? Take your pick. What became in Chicago of Willow Creek and Bill Hybels? That was all the talk. Everyone was going there. Oh, you can build in the flesh. You can build with compromise. You can build with false doctrine. You can build with hype. You can build with all kinds of things. But unless the Lord builds the house, it can not stand. Mm. And Hillsong is no exception. You wonder if at this point, Brian Houston would have a change of heart. Let's see what the, the question is here, Jacob, about looking inward. To make you look inward and say, whoa, I'm a pastor. What happened here? I have reflected many, many times. And I'm acknowledging uh, that mistakes have been made and that there are things where we need to get far better, much better. Uh, I'm not shrinking back from that. Have you Jacob, is he repentant, remorseful, both? What do you think? If he was a pastor who reflected and said, I have things wrong and we have to put things right, he would have done that after the first scandal with his father, Frank. He would have done it when Pat Mercedes had rolled. He would have done it by now. He didn't do it the first time. He didn't do it the second time. And he's not going to do it the third time. Very good. Very good. Now, with the size of Hillsong, it's a mega church in many places, different places. Uh, the, the right question would be, you know, maybe it's too big. You can't handle it. And I think this is where she's going with this. Is it time to maybe reflect on the size and downsize? Thought about maybe this church is too big. The problems reflect that. Then it's time to, to downsize or take a different approach. Yeah, I'm not sure a church can be too big. I just think we have to grow into ourselves. And God's on your side. I don't think a church can be too big. Jacob, I... I uh, maybe I've heard it from other people, but maybe I'm a bit surprised on, on the answer, but maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't be. What do you think? I think the book of Acts answers the question. Acts chapter 2 and certain other passages in the New Testament that support it. The early Christians met in house to house and in the temple. In the temple, we told in the book of Acts there were thousands of people. Thousands, which was a very large number of people for that time in history. There were thousands meeting in the temple, listening to the, apostles, listening to the apostles preaching. Thousands. But then they met in small groups, house to house. Real fellowship, real substance, relationally, of what the church is supposed to be, takes place in small groups. Big groups have their purpose, but the early church understood the balance, house to house and in the temple. You're not going to have fellowship or accountability, or real growth, or discovering your gifts in a mega church with thousands of people? You can hide in a mega church, but you can't grow in a mega church. It is not a biblical model. Even before the COVID problem, mega churches were beginning to decline. So many of them collapsed. The first one being, of course, Shulers, the next one being, of course, Willow Creek, but there are others. Now, post-COVID, they're really going to decline. It's something that happened that was not a scriptural model of ecclesiology to begin with. It didn't follow the scriptural principles of house to house and in the temple, of the need to have fellowship in small groups and congregate in large groups. That balance was not there. Mr. Houston fundamentally did not understand and New Testament ecclesiology, but he is not alone in this. Yeah, there, there seems to be a, um, I think the purpose of a lot of churches is to be a mega church. And uh, that, That's all. yeah, and that brings itself quite a bit. The pastor becomes the CEO of a, of, an, of a company. Yeah. 
and, and Hillsong seems to be operating like that, Jacob. It's it's the it's the corporation. It's a corporation, and of course, well, you understand they're not up against the world. You've got a large and growing Islamic population in neighborhoods of Sydney called Quinola. There were riots. There were riots on Bondi Beach in Sydney. What impact is Hillsong making in the Muslim community for Christ? None. Brian Houston said that Muslims have the same God as Christians. That's what he said from the platform. Well, Allah, the Nabataean moon God, is the same God as, as, as Christians? I don't think so. I really don't. I know too many people say that of Islam to believe that. I know the two gods become convoluted because of the linguistic issue of Allah and Arabic. But the, the real name for God in Arabic is, is something different. And there's a reason why believers who speak Arabic call Jesus Yeshua HaMasiyah. There's a reason. And the Muslims call him Isa. I lived in the Middle East for years. I do know something about Islamic evangelism. I have led Muslims to Christ. But I don't think Hillsong is leading any to Christ. I really don't. Sydney has one of the largest gay festivals in the world. What kind of impact are they making on the homosexual community? None. They just walk on them to church without ever addressing the issue that God wants to deliver them from it. These churches are not competing with the world. Mega churches compete with each other for customers, much like two businesses in rivalry trying to compete with each other. Before Hillsong, it was a church in Sydney run, run by Phil Pringle. He bought in Rodney Howard Brown and all this nonsense. It's just like companies competing for customers. They're taking people from one church to another. They have transfer growth, but they are not in any sense growing by seeing people saved and discipled out of the world. They have no discipleship. And their evangelism is a compromised gospel. They draw people with entertainment. You can draw people with entertainment, but you cannot keep people with entertainment. The world will always put on a better show. Very true, Jacob. I guess what you used to bring them in, you got to keep it going to keep them, keep them inside. Uh, now, the question about homosexuality, Jacob, here, here's the point where it, it gets, um, Savannah Guthrie gets to that point here. Uh, obviously, he's going to make Brian Houston answer the question. Uh, let's hear what he has to say. This is a segment in which uh, uh, there's a few, uh, a few videos, not too long, of him preaching and then they get to the question. Beyond the scandals, Hillsong is facing the cultural tensions of a rapidly expanding evangelical Christian church in a society where norms are changing quickly. Gay members of Hillsong have had difficult experiences, some who have said they've even felt suicidal after their experiences. Why do you think that has happened? Look, I want us to get better at uh, the way we communicate and embrace and work with people who are gay. I don't have any personal bias at all against gay or lesbian people. But unfortunately, as a pastor, you don't represent what you think. You represent what the Bible says. And so at this point, we still are conservative on, on the subject of active gay relationship, etc. But it's a journey. But everyone's welcome. Many, many people who are gay come to Hillsong Church. Well, that was his response. Jacob, what do you think? Now, look, he says two things. First of all, accepts the fact that there are quote-unquote homosexual members. Homosexual members. What Romans chapter 1 is not in his New Testament? Let me make a Christian statement about love towards homosexuals. How can I approve of cigarette smoking, if I love people who have cancer. If I love people who have cancer, I have to hate what gave them the cancer. When transgender, gender reassigned people have a 50% suicide rate, 50%, I have to be against what's killing them. I cannot, as a Christian, call to love people with the love of Christ, approve of what's killing them. I do not approve of alcoholics getting drunk. I do not approve of junkies shooting up. I used to be a cocaine addict. I do not approve of 
lifestyles that are destructive to people. I love people who smoke. Therefore, I hate the cigarettes. It's no different with abnormal sexual orientations. Now, he says he upholds what the Bible says, but look how he phrased it. I have no problem with gay people, he says, gay. Unfortunately, I have to uphold what the Bible says <laughs> as a pastor. If he finds it unfortunate that he has to uphold what's in the New Testament, if he finds it unfortunate that he has to uphold what the Word of God teaches, he shouldn't be a pastor, should he? Those are the exact words. Yeah, I think this was probably the most troublesome answer, which is uh, it wasn't really surprising based on other pastors of Hillsong have said, including Carl Lentz. Um, but he says, he says, unfortunately, he says at this point, we have to hold a conservative view. Uh, it almost like it seems like he just wants to come out and just says, look, I don't want to do this, but I have to. Uh, at this point, that's what he's saying. <laughs> that's what he's saying. Uh, very uncomfortable answer, by the way, if you look at his uh, mannerism and, and, and his posture. So uh, let's continue, Jacob, because uh, he's coming down to the end of it. And, um, and, and it's a valid question, I think, by, uh, by the interviewer here, Guthrie, regarding how Jesus would feel about it. Now, for the church itself, it's a season of finding redemption. Churches can come in all kinds of sizes and shapes and flavors, but you see the lights, you see the music, you do see the pretty people. Do you ever think about what Jesus would have felt like sitting in Hillsong Church? Your honest answer? Yes. I think he would like it. Because I think we're focusing on glorifying him. That's would Jesus come to Hillsong? Would he like it, Jacob? He might come to Hillsong, but he wouldn't like it. He would do what he did when he entered the temple and drove the money changers out. He would say, stop making my father's house into a racket. That's the first thing he would do. If you want to know what he thinks that would think about the worship, read Isaiah 26. The gaiety of the tambourines comes to an end. It's not worship. It's entertainment. No, he wouldn't like it. The father, Jesus taught, wants to be worshipped in spirit and in truth. The spirit there is the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age. The truth the truth is not there. They do not teach scriptural doctrine comprehensively. So this whole idea that, G that Jesus will come to Hillsong and be very comfortable and he'll like it, he liked the music and the, and the shows and the light and the people there, at least they're hearing about Jesus. That's what some people have told me. At least people come to hear Jesus at, at Hillsong. Which Jesus are they hearing about? The, the figment of someone's imagination or the real Jesus of the scripture? who hated sin, who was tortured to death for our sin. Now, there's a place for joy. There's a place for celebration. There is a place for rejoicing. The joy of the Lord is our strength. However, it must be scripturally based. And when you are compromising on sexual morality, and you are compromising on the worship of mammon, pretending it's the worship of God, and when you are compromising on biblical standards concerning other religions and other lifestyle orientations that are contrary to scripture and you fudge the issue, find another name for it. It's not the real Jesus. Amen. Jacob, we're coming down to the last question. This is uh, uh, coming down to the last part of the interview. And this is, uh, of course, regarding the heartbreak that a lot of uh, Hillsong members have felt. Some have left. Uh, many people have left in droves out of the New York one. Some people have left out of the Australia one. And um, what does he say to those who feel heartbroken about what has happened? To quite a few parishioners, what is your message to those who love this church and are heartbroken about what's happened? Those are the things that keep me awake at night. I think larger churches everywhere are needing to scramble to put the things in place for a 21st century mindset that will enable us to be stronger. But, Savannah, I look in your eye and tell you, I genuinely believe in my heart Hillsong is a good church. 
Well, that's the end of that interview. Jacob, any thoughts on that? Heartbroken people leaving Hillsong, and he says, you know, Hillsong's a good church. What's your thoughts? If anybody loves the Lord Jesus, is truly born again, and desires to follow him on the basis of Scripture, and they're in a church like Hillsong, teaching error, compromising on moral issues, having unscriptural models of leadership, an unscriptural ecclesiology and a, and a wrong philosophy of church itself. Anybody who loves Jesus and goes to Hillsong, the Holy Spirit is going to show them, get out of this place. This is not my house. I don't live here, saith the Lord. Um, Jacob, there's some troublesome things on, on, on this interview, and I think anybody watching it would, would kind of want to know, hey, there's more to the story than what the interview was showing. Of course, we're not privy to the whole entire interview. Uh, but some of the things he says about homosexuality, some things is about church growth. He likes a bigger church. There's no such thing as a big church that he wants a bigger. Um, Hillsong is a good church. Jesus would love this church. Uh, there's just a lot of troublesome spots. Now, if you didn't know any better, you would just walk in and hear him out, maybe a sincere person who's been maligned and he's been attacked and all this stuff. But uh, if somebody... Let's say Jacob watches this video, you and I watching this video here, and, and they're watching you, hearing you. Uh, what's your take on, on Hillsong as a whole? And what are your recommendations for Christians who uh, have maybe friends or family who have joined Hillsong, how to talk to them, how to speak to them uh, <coughs> regarding their scandals? It was wrong from the roots. If you cannot find a decent church where you live, <clears throat> Meet in a home with a small group of people who love Jesus and begin over. That's your church. Hillsong is not any scriptural model of what Christianity is supposed to be. It's a business. It is an enterprise built on entertainment. It is something that's been characterized by sexual immorality repeatedly, not just with Carl Lenz, well before him and after and characterized by financial impropriety and scandals, according to ABC, Australian television, and other sources. This is Hillsong. You're not honoring Jesus or helping your family or yourself by staying in a place like that. Now, if Brian Houston wants to debate me in front of a camera, I'll be there. Our ministry has an office in, in Australia, in, in Melbourne. I will be there. I will come and debate him publicly about his teaching, about his ecclesiology, and about his moral record concerning his father to begin with. Thank you, Jacob. And I think the, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions that were left unanswered, of course. And I think one of the biggest question is, um, are mega churches going to survive? You answer that question. Um, I, I think there's a uh, what, what's happening in the West and the coming persecution. It just seems like that would be a target that either big churches like this are either going to compromise or they're going to stop existing. Correct. Um, Jacob, we're done with the interview here. Uh, we appreciate your time. Any final thoughts, uh, especially those? Yeah. Not, uh, yeah especially if you those really want to understand Hillsong, if you really want to understand what Hillsong is about, don't read the Bible. If you really want to understand what Hillsong is about, get a copy of Brian Houston's book, You Need More Money. That's what Hillsong is about. Jacob, thank you for the few minutes that we had together. It's been a very, very good video. Uh, thank you for your response to Brian Houston's, uh, his own response and, and his comments regarding uh, the scandals. We appreciate your time as always. Uh, good to catch up with you. We'll catch up with you this Friday. Uh, more things are happening in the world. Thank you so much for staying up with us. God bless and thank you so much for listening. Please keep us in prayer. One last thing. If Brian Houston can fall, so can I. May the Lord take me out of the ministry rather than I mislead his people. I say that sincerely. Please keep us in prayer. Thank you, Jacob. God bless. Mm -hmm.